So I have to show you some clips here of what I call cancel culture run amok. <laughs> this is what happens when things are... I, I, I don't know what to make of it. I, I, I think people are just a little over-exaggerated uh, on things. And don't really... When, when, you know, decisions are made, they don't stop to look at the decision and go, was that the right move? So we've, you know, cancel culture in itself is already uh, a problem within itself. Like there's things I don't really understand. There's things I'm still confused on. I really don't understand some of the thought processes behind it. Things are a little bit confusing. Things don't really add up. And, and sometimes you look at it and go, is it really, is it really necessary? Is it really necessary? Or is this just, you know, thought police going after you? for the most random thing possible. So you always ask those questions and I don't know what to make of this because, you know, being getting close to the Halloween season and Halloween being one of my favorite holidays, mostly just to watch the cheesy, the cheesiest uh, horror flicks there is. I mean, I just watched uh, Amityville horror the other day and I mean, I got to tell you, Ryan Reynolds, I got to tell you, Ryan Reynolds could definitely pull off a horror film, um, but it's, it's still cheesy. It's still cheesy. Like all the old flicks, all the old slashers. I mean, that's pretty much what I do now for Halloween. Cause you know, <laughs> I'm too old to trick or treat, you know, you get to a certain point. It's no, no, no longer cute. So what else are you going to do? What else are you going to do? Uh, Basically, buy your own candy and binge watch crappy horror flicks. Uh, and just laugh for the fun of it. But apparently, in some school districts, uh, little kids that, you know, Halloween's mostly catered to, can no longer partake in Halloween. And this is where, again, cancel culture on amok. I have to stop and think about this. Why? Well, here's ABC News to explain it to me. This morning, parents speaking out as school districts across the country opt to cancel Halloween celebrations. I feel like it's just crossing the line and it's just, where does it end? So next people are going to be offended by pumpkins. So we're going to take away pumpkins or jack-o'-lanterns or pumpkin carving. Lower Marion School District in Pennsylvania ending the Halloween tradition after more than 50 years, in part because of safety concerns. Officials pointing to the recent shooting death of a 14-year-old outside a nearby football game as one concern. So because of a shooting, we have to cancel Halloween. As if those two somehow connect to one another. You know there's a shooting every single goddamn hour. Every few minutes I hear about a shooting in the United States. A massacre that happens every few minutes. What does that have to do with Halloween? Now all of a sudden people are safe? <laughs> now all of a sudden people are like, oh, we're concerned about gun safety. So we're going to cancel out, uh, you know, Halloween activities for the kids. Because of a gun fatality that happens every goddamn day in the United States. Like, do you see how nuts this all is? Do you see how there's no uh, cognitive decision making to this? There's no thought process. It, 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 gets, it gets even more weird from here. A similar scene in Ohio this past Friday. Three people injured in a shooting outside a high school game. There's danger in every possible venue in every way. So what, are you going to cancel everything? I don't know. But She makes a point. She makes a point. There's a shooting that happens every goddamn day, anywhere you go. America has a, has a violent problem. Yes, I get that. It's a mental illness. We've talked about this at length, ladies and gentlemen. I have said monologues after monologues after discussion and lectures about the violent, uh, violent history <laughs> and the violent, you know, takes of America and how it has a violence problem. Does that have anything to do with Halloween? God, no. Does that have anything to do with any holiday? No, no. What does that have to do with kids dressing up in costumes and passing out Snicker bars? 
Like, this, this is literally the dumbest take of this. So you're going to cancel Halloween because of a, a couple gun fatalities that happen not, not even on Halloween day. Like, it doesn't even make sense. You're gonna can't, are you going to cancel everything? You're going to have no venues? Nobody can go outside now? Because they, things are so out of control, unsafe? But the district says inclusivity is also a reason for canceling Halloween festivities. Oh my in the God. past, students who did not celebrate Halloween had to sit in the library. That felt a little exclusionary. It didn't really feel like it was generating that sense of belonging that we hope to have in our schools. In the CN This this is the thing. This is the thing. I understand. If you're a certain background that can't celebrate Halloween because of religious reasons or personal reasons, you know, you have to acknowledge people's differences. You have to acknowledge it and understand that. But that doesn't transcend to everybody else partaking with your beliefs. That 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 doesn't how that's not how reality works. That's not how society functions. Okay, you have to acknowledge that, yes, people are different. They're going to have different backgrounds. They're going to have different religions. They're going to have different opinions. You have to acknowledge that. You have to acknowledge that people are different. But does that mean because of one person sitting out on Halloween that Halloween has to be officially canceled because of one person? No, that's not how society functions. And I can even give you a personal example. You know, high school prom. I wasn't invited. They only allowed 400 grade 12 students. I had a, I, I went to school where there was like 512 of them. I was one of the people that, that didn't go. Did they cancel the prom? No. And would they, should they cancel the prom? God, no. Why? Because of me? Like, it, it, does, it doesn't make sense. It literally does not make sense. <coughs> so, because, so because a few people, a few individuals that opted out of Halloween activities, then the whole entire, the whole entire orchestration of Halloween activities for kids is completely gone. Do you ever stop and think for a second of exactly what you're doing, what the thought process of that is? Like, I, 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 what, is what is the school board sitting there thinking about this? This is just unbelievably crazy. Seattle area, Halloween has also been canceled at Brookside Elementary. That's according to radio station KTTH, which reports the principal said many see Halloween as a fun candy filled holiday, adding this is not the case for all. Halloween celebrations are exclusionary for students who come from certain cultural or religious backgrounds and outside Lansing, Michigan, Hold Public Schools is saying no to all holiday celebrations then those people don't partake in Halloween. <laughs> that, like, how, how simple is that? You don't have to join with the holiday. If you don't want to be part of it, don't be part of it, but don't ruin it for everybody else. <laughs> Again, I give you my prom story to make it, make it a personal note. I, I, didn't, I didn't go around saying you got to cancel the prom because I didn't get invited. You don't, you don't, you don't do that. That's sociopathic. That's narcissistic right there. That's you being bigoted to everybody else. That's making you a priority compared to every single person that have celebrated Halloween and just want to dress up and pass around candy. And I think they said that school has been doing it for like 50 years. 50 years. Now they canceled it. They canceled it because a few individuals who couldn't partake in it now they now they hire they change the hierarchy to make them the biggest priority and they have to cancel everything. Like this is just it's mind boggling. It's mind boggling. And like I said, I don't think the wires were fully connected when people thought about this. That the safety and inc inclusiveness reason are not good reasons to cancel uh, a kid friendly holiday. Like, what is the worst that they're going to do? They're going to dress up in cowboy outfits and princesses and, you know, go around and say boo to each other and pass around candy bars. 
Like, it is just unbelievably insane. Like, even when I heard about this, oh, they're canceling Halloween because of safety reasons. I, I My first thought was, oh, because of the whole razor blade scandal thing. Remember they used to say that there was a razor blade in somebody's apple? That's why you got to scare and fear people and that you got to check your candy because there's not many, there's not nice people out there that are going to poison you and, and ruin your life. And then it turns out that number was only 0.01% of the entire popula population of North America that's ever actually experienced a razor blade in an apple. Like, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's utterly insane. And this is just how cancel culture plays into these rounds. But this isn't the only clip I want to show you because I want to show you the other side of cancel culture because everybody assumes that when you look at this, oh, this is definitely a woke lefty liberal uh, synops of, you know, the, the college elitist that, you know, wants to transgrand because they want inclusivity and all this other stuff. Well, now here's the other side. And the reason I want to show you this is to remind people that everyone, anyone can be a snowflake. And in fact, the most original people that wanted to censor and cancel culture out, actually people on the right, the religious right, they were kind of the OGs of cancel culture. And then the woke liberal, uh, the, the woke liberals, kind of took over that. But here's the other side of the story to, to bring this in proportion. And we begin tonight with the controversial painting by a Grant High School student. It's on a wall in the middle school building. And tonight, some parents complained to the school board about its messages. 13 On Your Side's Nate Belt was at tonight's meeting and has details. I put my art up there to make people feel welcome. That's how Grant High School student Evelyn Gonzalez describes this mural. She painted it inside the middle school's Teen Health Center, and parents are concerned about some of its content. Now this here is the mural in question that was a hot topic tonight at the school board meeting here at Grant Middle School. Now, uh, the, some of the things that the parents were closely paying attention to included the trans flag on this t-shirt here, this symbol, which the artist says comes from a video game, as well as this symbol here, which she says is a Hispanic sign of protection. I feel like she did a really good job finding excuses to defend the things she put on. None of us are that stupid. Parents alleged the video game character I love how she had to put herself there by saying she came up with a lot of excuses to keep this mural up, but do we think that we're that stupid? You understand that this is a mural at a school. You understand that these are young, prepubescent kids that are, you know, probably busy with their friends and social media and, you know, playing outside and, you know, their schoolwork that... They don't really care about this. I noticed that there's not a lot of kids that are freaking out about this because probably a lot of kids are just walking by and going like, oh, pretty colors. whoop de doo It's a mural for God's sakes. It's a freaking mural. <laughs> do, you think, do you think kids are going to walk by and be like, oh, the Antichrist is on there. But it's from a video game. Like, is this gonna make is this gonna make the school satanic then? Does it say all uh, hail Satan and we trust or something like that? It's a it's a freaking mural, for God's sakes! It's a bunch of colors splat together and people take it in different ways. That's the point of art. Someone draws something or paints something. Someone may look at that differently than somebody else. That's the point of art. Art is subjective. So yes, lady, you're kind of a bit dumb on this. Do, do, do people think you're really that stupid? Maybe because you're con so concerned about a mural uh, screwing up your kids. So maybe your kids are so naive and dumb. If, if, if you think that. You really think your kids are going to be screwed up by a bunch of paintings. <laughs> a bunch of colors transfused together on a wall. is actually a depiction of Satan and that the hand symbol is demonic with several even using the word witchcraft to describe it. 
that's not what I'm a part of. And that's not what I'm trying to put out there. As for the transgender flag, one parent implied it's a sickness. When adults pretend things that are like real life, it's a mental illness. We need counselors. We need the medication that's going to help bipolar disorder fix their brains. With another saying it's discriminatory against Christian beliefs. We and our administration should uh, embrace that and get all of this hate material out of our schools because it is hate material. Not everybody was opposed to. I didn't get a fair glimpse of the whole mural. But judging from the B-roll of what they're showing here. Is there anything that looks hatred? Did they say, you know, screw you, Christian guys? Did they say, you know, screw the Bible? Does it say any of that on there? Or is it just a bunch of creative designs put together to show the world, hey, there's, you know, inclusivity and shit like that. Hey, maybe we should just get along with one another. Hey, maybe we should just start treating each other like human fucking beings. You ever thought of that? You ever thought of that? Just actually talking to one another like a human being? Like, it's just, it, it's crazy. To the mural, one parent was appalled by some of the words used. I am a conservative, right-wing, gun-loving American. But I have never seen more bigoted people in my life. <laughs> and wants to see more acceptance in her community. We have an array of people in this little town. And I'll be the first one to support our Christian families. <laughs> but we're not the only ones here. A student and friend of the artists who described themselves as queer says they were bullied throughout middle school and into high school. They say the mural makes them feel included. Maybe you should be more concerned with your children's behaviors instead of what art is on the wall. While some parents called for the mural to be removed or altered, Grant Public School's handbook includes a non-discriminatory policy, saying in part, any form of discrimination or harassment can be devastating to an individual's academic progress, social relationship, and or personal sense of self-worth. No decision was made on the future of the mural at Monday's meeting. In Grant, Nate Belt, 13 on your side. So there you go. And again, the reason I showed you that is to remind people that anyone can be a snowflake. Anyone. It's on both sides of the aisle, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just for lefties anymore. You people on the right were also the OG contributors of cancel culture. So now you understand cancel culture running amok. Just how crazy it is. When it's a mural or when it's Halloween or if it's about a holiday or anything like that. When we just need to chillax <laughs> I know I'm gonna sound really hip right now um we just need to calm down and just stop this madness you know I I, I want to take the words of what Morgan Freeman once said in a 60 minutes interview um when they asked him about about Black History Month they asked Morgan Freeman what he thought about that and Morgan Freeman said he hated it he hated the idea of Black History Month. Why? Because why is Black history any different than white history? Why is it segregated to, A, one of the shortest months of the year, which is kind of, kind of insulting if you really think about it, and B, why is it segregated to only one group of people when, you know, white individuals, Asian Americans, anybody else can relate to people like Martin Luther King or Malcolm X or uh, James Baldwin. I can relate to those. Like, I, I look up to those people. MLK was a real supporter of, you know, working rights. He, he was the arbiter of granting people and, and fighting for the middle class and fighting for, you know, impoverished people. Why is he, why is he any different? Why do you have to segregate to to one month of the year, the shortest month of the year? It didn't make sense. And Morgan Freeman pointed that out. He said, "Where's Jewish History Month? Where's where's the where's White History Month? If we're gonna segregate every ethnicity to a certain month, where's all this?" So this is just kind of the backwards, crazy insanity that goes along with this, and. People use identity politics to 
uh, fight against one another. They use it to separate us, to divide us, to manufacture this aggression. And this is this is what you get out of it. When people are, you know, so concerned about a mural or so concerned about Halloween, when really the thing I could take away from these clips, the thing I should really take away from these clips is the fact that uh, A, schools are underfunded and maybe we should help kids get a better education. That That's something they could have added to this news report. Or how about the fact that, hey, there's a gun violence problem in America. Let's resolve that and, you know, not worry about Halloween. A fun time for kids. Just unbelievably crazy. But it's satanic. That's, you know, that's the danger of it. I hear, I hear, I hear that constantly. I just had a neighbor once that <laughs> constantly said that. It's a satanic holiday. Um, which to that, I say, you should really watch the, uh, history special that they did a documentary on the origin of Halloween. It's actually really impressive. Um, the reason we have Halloween is because of pagan traditions that celebrated the end of the harvest and the real demonic presence of Halloween, the, the, the satanic ness of, of the, of the holiday that people are so worried about, you can actually thank the Christian church for that because they were the ones that doctrined it into the holiday. They took over the pagan tradition and added that into that holiday. So there you go. <laughs> A pagan tradition to celebrate the end of, har of the harvest uh, got taken over and made it demonic and made it satanic. So, you know, no nobody wins here. Nobody wins here. <laughs> so like I said, anyone can be a snowflake. Anyone can be a cancel culture freakazoid snowflake that doesn't really make sense to anybody. And people should maybe take that extra step and take that extra moment of their life to look at something like this and go, is it really worth it? Is it really worth putting myself ahead of everybody else? Is it really worth canceling out something that's been celebrated for 50 plus years that little kids going around, you know, trick or treating and, uh, you know, playing Halloween games. Is it really worth canceling out because some people choose to opt out of it? That's their choice. That's their decision. But why does everyone else have to suffer? Like, it just does not make sense. It doesn't make sense to anybody. And that's, that's where people need to sit down and realize what cancel call when you leave cancel culture to the way it is, what's really going to happen.